Hey guys, Evans with Z111 here today bringing you a video on a game called Cavern Kings, a game that is currently out on the early access program on Steam and it's currently in beta, however it is very, very nearly at full release. So, um, there are two modes for our standard and arena. To show you what the game is actually like, I'll be jumping in standard mode. There are a wide array of characters which you have to unlock. They all have different perks and bonuses, but I will just be playing as the Jack of All Trades character which doesn't have any modifiers or anything like that. And this game is a side-scroller, as you can see, pixel graphics. I really like the art style. And the objective of the game is to dig and just to get down as far as you can go. So you keep on digging as far as you can go and eventually you'll be faced with enemies and stuff. But this is just for starting area. This is where you can see your records and everything and all the trophies you've gotten. But now as soon as I descend down here, that is when um, that's when shit goes down. So I will jump down. I got the sword driver weapon. Probably one of my least favourite. If you left click it fires sword blades that stay, in, um, stay for a few seconds and damage enemies. Now... You also have a melee weapon, which you saw up there, which I got, which is this. Every time I right click, it launches me in the direction as well as digs up blocks like that. Now there are a few traps on the ground if I get rid of them, and basically I want to stay in this first area, kill a few enemies, get some experience, and get some gems. Gems give you cash or money, which you can use to unlock chests, and experience levels you up, which increases your max health and um, increases the amount of damage you do as well. I will mention, the weapons, which you saw me get, are randomised. There's a good selection of about, I'd say, uh, 4 or 5 ranged weapons and 4 or 5 melee weapons. You can unlock more as the game goes on, however, all that content isn't fully released yet. They are adding more with each update, so I won't, I won't give final numbers or anything. Now, yeah, you can't stay in one area too long because this happens. This drill is slowly descending and as soon as that thing touches you, you die. So, what you have to do, you have to go down and you keep going down. You go down, the enemies get harder, you eventually get more traps, the terrain gets more or harder to destroy, and the enemies get beefier in general. So you need to decide how much time you want to spend on a floor before you decide to move on to the next one. Because if you don't spend long enough on the floor, then you're, you're going to be a low level, you're not going to be doing much damage, and the enemy is going to be more powerful than you. But at the same time, can't stay there too long, because there's kind of a um, descending threat on the way. Now there are crates around every now and then, I think I just destroyed one earlier, but... They drop loads of gems, and occasionally items too. Unfortunately, I haven't actually found any items yet, because items are like the main thing that randomise each playthrough. Um, I think the best way I could compare it is, say, if you played Risk of Rain, the items like that, it's very, very similar. You can get items and they stack, you can get different items and they work with each other, you get lots of different synergies and stuff, and the item effects are actually very similar to Risk of Rain too, as well as just the style. Now, I have got enough cash to open this chest, so I'll open that, and first item I get is a Heart of Lyle, which regenerates health over time, which will regenerate about 1, one HP every few seconds, and again, if I get another one of those hearts, then it will regenerate even faster, and stuff like that. Now you may notice this floor is um, kind of watery, that's because there are unique modifiers, you can get snow ones, you can get watery ones, and they just affect how you move around and things like that. Now there is a TNT crate up here, if I destroy this, it will send out a lot, I, I want to be careful here because it can damage me, it sends out a lot of bombs like that which can be useful for destroying terrain and destroying enemies as well as destroying yourself. That's not too useful, but it's more of a hindrance. However, it's um, yeah, it's one of those double-edged swords. Those crates, however, just destroy terrain and damage enemies. I don't think they damage you, because they've never damaged me, but I don't know if that's a bug or what, because I don't know why the TNT ones would, but the other ones don't. That chest is there. I will go down so I can kill that one with some extra gems before I go to the next floor, and here I am. Thank god the water's gone. I really don't like the water. There's another chest. But I really haven't got enough gems right. I haven't found any items, and I'm on like, I'm 2,000 feet down. The first boss is at about, I think it's 4,000 feet. And if I don't have any items by then, well, screw me. I, I say I haven't got any items. I don't mean, um, item like I've got the heart, but I haven't got any active items that actually make me be more damaging or anything, which is quite annoying. You can see there are a lot more different enemies coming in now. Um, this one is like dropping in the little. Oh, they have names. I forgot what they're called. I was just call them little creep dudes that are really easy to kill, but get kind of annoying as they swarm. This run, I'm getting incredibly, incredibly unlucky. I can open this chest, which I will do, and hopefully... Okay, I got the Sullied Kerpan. I actually have no idea how to, how to pronounce that, but that just throws out knives every now and then, um, which I think it only does if there's enemies nearby, so if I go here, and I'll just try and show it off a little... In fact, maybe that needs to be firing. Oh yeah, there we go. If I'm firing, then it's just throwing out knives every now and then. It has a um, percent chance to throw out a knife. Two chests, but that's not really good because I don't have any coins. These things are kind of annoying because they're very... Oh, crap. That was um, that was unintentional. Just gone down to the next floor, which um, is bad because I didn't get any gems or experience from that floor. And I am very, very close to a boss room. 
So, yeah, I, I will... I'm not going to get your hopes up. I will not be able to defeat this boss in 100 years. I got a new item. This one is useful. It just fires out darts in all directions, which um, damages the enemies. It's not the most damaging thing, but it's still nice to have on top of all the other damage I'm dishing out. And... If you, like, haven't gathered at this point, this is the bulk of the game. You just keep going down, you keep going on different floors, different enemies, different layouts, different items, different weapons, different characters. And in that regard, it is similar to the game Super Crate Box, which um, is a Flash game. You can actually play it online for free, or you can download it on Steam even, and I believe it's also free on Steam. But it's a really fun side-scroll, not side-scrolling, action arena-based platformer, where you get different randomised weapons and different characters and stuff like that. I loved that game, it's so addicting. Which does actually lead me on to say why this game is good. It is, um, it's, uh, this is a good thing and a bad thing, really. It's really, it's one of those games where you're constantly like, okay, one more try, one more try. I have had that so much with this game, like, I wanted to get some first impressions, see how it ran, and I was playing for a good two hours or so, because I was just like, okay, I want to see what this item does, so I've unlocked an item, I want to see what that does. And yeah, it's, it's one of those games, so if those are your kind of thing, then... This game is probably for you, however, if you do value your time, then not the best idea. Maybe look into other games. I did pick up an item earlier that leaves behind a trail of fire everywhere I walk, that does damage to enemies. Very, very similar to a Risk of Rain item pickup. And like, this game isn't trying to be original, it is directly said on the Steam page that it's taken inspiration from the games I've listed actually, as well as a few others, possibly maybe perhaps. This game, that doesn't worry about originality or innovation, it just tries to be fun. And it does that. It is a fun game, and I think the boss is next. No, okay, I've got one more floor. Now, the ice one is crazy, because with Kinetic Fist, I just slide along like that. It's, it's really awesome, and really hard to manoeuvre at the same time, because Kinetic Fist throws you along, and the ice ones mean you have essentially no friction, and you just slide along the ground. Now, as far as criticisms with this game go, yeah, you can choose your character, but having the two starting weapons randomised is kind of a pain, because the starting weapons are all incredibly different, and there's no way to get different weapons whilst you're playing. The starting weapons are ones you're stuck with until the next game, and it's a roguelike in that regard, because you can unlock stuff, but once you die, you die. Everything's gone. If you unlock more items to drop, then you can get them, a la Binding of Isaac, or even Risk of Rain, or anything like that, but if you actually pick up items, they're all gone when you die, and the only thing that's different amongst each playthrough is what you've unlocked and then they can um, be eligible to drop. I need to be careful, because this thing, I swear it's descending faster. Okay, um, I'm not sure where the boss is, but I'm not complaining. That's, um, oh, okay, melee attacks reduce armor. Now, the enemies are starting to get modifiers, like electricity and poison, and ex you can get exploding ones and stuff like that, so I need to be more careful about how I deal with them. Also, the traps are getting more varied, too. Um, I'm, to be honest, I'm just going to get these crates. Oh, damn it. I was going to say, I'm just going to get these crates and then go down to the next floor. Because um, I don't want to take any unnecessary damage and lose health for the boss battle. So let's kill these guys and pick up this health and gems. I'm on full health and... Okay, maybe it was 5,000. That would make more sense. So let's go down and... Okay, here it is. This boss I haven't beat before. I've beat the eyeball one, but I haven't beat this one. I just stood on spikes. I've lost nearly all my health. Alright, let's see if I can get these health... Oh, crap. No, 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 no. If I can get these crates when I get health... There we go. Okay, sweet. I'll get this for the extra item... That's poison. That would be really useful against the boss. But no. Yeah, the bosses are pretty difficult. Unless you're well equipped, you're going to have problems. So, yeah, that is Cavern Kings in a nutshell. If you want to see more videos on this game, do let me know. I'll show you the arena mode. I'll show you different characters, different weapons, everything like that. Just let me know if you want more. Otherwise, this is a summary of what the game is. And I think it's a good game. It's really good. Can't really fault it. It's fun. And, um, yeah, it's got a decent amount of content going for it. So keep an eye on it if you're interested. And if it interests you enough, then pick it up at full release. It's available on Steam, description, uh, with links and everything. And, yeah, if you like the video, please leave a like. This is me, Evans with Z111, out. Peace.